In this video we're going to take a look at AP Crypt, which is an easy mobile challenge and the description says, can you get the ticket without the VIP code? This is the first mobile challenge that Hack the Box have retired, so this is the first one I've done a video on. And I've already got the files downloaded, let's go and take a look at them. Let's see what we have here first of all. we got an APK, which shows is a zip archive. You can actually unzip it as well to get access to all the files inside, but we'll not do that just yet. We've also got a readme.txt, which says, install the application in API level 29 or earlier, i.e. Android 10. That's fine, we don't need that, I'm going to remove it. So APK stands for Android Package Kit, and it's the type of file that we would use to install an app on an Android device, so a phone or a tablet or something like that. I'm just opening up this Medium article, which was a write-up from a CTF challenge where they had to reverse a Android game, an APK file. So this is very similar to the challenge that we're going to be going through. And I just want to bring this up just so that we can see that there are some different tools we can use, APK tool, Jadix GUI, we have some information here about how the actual apps work. So this is important. Whenever the Java files are compiled into an APK, into the app, we're basically generating some bytecode, Dalvik bytecode, which is these .dex files. And this is quite similar to if we were looking at a traditional binary. So if we had a C file, we compile it into an exe, let's say, and we're not able to read that code that's produced. It just gives us the machine code. But we are able to use a decompiler or a disassembler. So if we think about Geodra, whenever we take an exe or a elf file, we take it into Geodra and we get both the assembly code and the decompiled code as well. The decompiled code isn't exact, but it gives you a rough version of what the C code would have been before it was compiled. And then we have the assembly code. So this is kind of similar. Whenever we have an APK and it's in this unreadable form, the .dex file, we can potentially decompile it, but it'll be a bit like Geodra, so it won't decompile it in the sense that we'll be able to then easily recompile it, but it'll give you a rough idea of the pseudocode that's used. Alternatively, we can disassemble it into this .smally code, which will allow us to then make modifications and then recompile it, essentially. So whenever we use Geodra or some Ida Pro or something like that, and we modify some instructions, that's patching the binary. So quite similar here, if we want to patch it, we'll need to have a look at the .smally code. But if we just want to try and work out what's going on, we can try and use some tools to try and decompile it into a more readable form. So you've got some different tools here. This Here's some more Dexter jar, bytecode viewer. It tells you about the structure of the APK. So we have our files, we have our code, we've got resources along with it. Some information about static analysis. And then we also have tools that we can use to run the APK. So I don't know if it's actually mentioned here, but we can use something like Android Studio to actually debug the APK. So if we were to make some changes to the code and then recompile it, we could then open it up in something like Android Studio to view the modified app. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to close this down uh, just to bring that up. If, if you want to go and have a read through the article, feel free to do so. Let's go and take a look at this APK though. The first tool I'm going to open is Jadix GUI, which is one of the tools we saw mentioned in that article. So we open up our APK. We can go and have a look through the packages here, the source code. So we'll go into example AP Crypt. We've got our config here. We've got our main activity, which is what we're going to want to focus on. And you can see the functions here as well. So we could go and click on those individually. We can see that there's some encryption and decryption happening here. We've got an MD5 function, generate key and we've got our main activity. So this is essentially, if we were thinking about this like Geodra and we've just given it a binary, this is the decompiled code and we have the smally code down here as well so we can click on that and that gives us what's closer to the assembly code. So we can't just make changes to this Java code and then go and run the APK, but we can potentially make changes to this smally code and then repackage it and go and run it. So. Uh, we'll look at that later. Let's go back to this code and see a bit more what it's doing. So we have our generate key down here, which is generating AES key. And we have a decrypt and encrypt function. We've got a function here, which is going to MD5 uh, string and return the value. And then our main activity, we can see here on click, it's going to MD5. It's going to get this value as a string and it's going to MD5 it and compare it to this value that we have here. If it matches, it's going to decrypt this value using the AES decryption. 
otherwise it's going to tell us we've got the wrong code. So we know that if we're able to find out whatever string is going to MD5 into this value and enter that as a parameter, we'll be able to retrieve that flag. So the first thing you might be thinking is can we crack the hash? And that's a good idea, that's the first thing we should check. Presumably not, seeing as the challenge is a mobile challenge, that would be a bit easy. And yeah, there's no hashes found. So if we can't crack that hash, the next thing we might want to look at is see if we can replace this hash with a hash that we do know the answer to. So we could go and hash something like admin and then go and replace this value with the hash of admin. And then we know we can just enter admin to make this condition true. We could also patch this similar to how you might patch a binary in Ida Pro or Girdra, whereby you have a condition. In this example, we have a condition saying if this matches, then do this, else do this. Well, we could just reverse that and say, if this doesn't match, then do this. And that means anytime you enter anything but the correct password, it's going to decrypt that value. So both of those are valid options. There might be multiple ways to solve this challenge, by the way. I'm just going through how I approached it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this down. Let's have a look and see if we can make some changes. We can use something like APK tool, which again was something that was mentioned in that article. We can go and have a look at it here, see what options we've got. If you don't have this installed, sudo apt get install or check their GitHub. And let's run apk tool d for decode. I actually don't see d mentioned here. I don't see a mention, but d is will decode it. Um, so we'll use d and then apk apcrypt. And you can see that's retrieving all of the files in the apk. Let's see what we've got here. We've got this apcrypt folder. And we can have a look to see what we've got in here. We've got all these smally files. A lot of these are just going to be for standard library code rather than the actual app that we're dealing with. So don't worry if you're seeing a lot of files here. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this up in Codium. You can see we probably want to go and install an extension here. Search for smally. We've got one here with 96 downloads another one with a thousand downloads and it looks like we can do a lot of things with APKs in here so I'm going to install this and if we close that down now we've got our syntax highlighting so we can go and read through this see what we've got we're looking out for the MD5 hash obviously because we know that's of interest we've also got the value here which is used to initialize the AES key Okay, no mention there. Let's go and check this other one. Okay, this one has the hash. And without understanding exactly how to read smally, we can get an idea similarly, similarly with assembly code. You don't have to know the ins and outs of assembly code to be able to spot some key functionality. For example, here we have this string. We can see it's checking if equals. And then down here we have if equals do condition zero. So quite similar to what we would see in assembly code, like jump not zero and stuff like that, jump zero. And in fact, so let's go and have a quick look. Let's see what the smally basics are. Language basic syntax, okay. So, so you can see here, Z is a Boolean, B is a byte, S is a short, C is char, int is I. If we go back here, what do we have for, see here, for example, V zero, V is void, P is our parameters, as we saw there, P1, V0. But again, we don't really need to understand too much of this. We've got two options here. We could either go and say we could get a, an MD5 sum. Let's do MD5. Sorry, let's do echo-n admin and then send it to MD5 sum. Dash N just to make sure it doesn't have the new line. We could take a copy of that and we could insert it here. In fact, I'll, I will do that. But what I'm also going to do is change this as well. Instead of if equals, let's change this to if not equals, which is if any z. And we'll save that. And now we can go and try to repackage this into an APK. So to do that, let's go back a directory and let's run our APK tool again. This time, instead of D, we're going to use B to build and then just pass in that whole folder. AP crypts. 
and the output we'll just call it modified.apk. So that's going to run through and notice that I have here apk tool 2.5.0 dirty and we've run into some errors here it doesn't produce the new apk. I think this is just the version which comes with Kali or, and Parrot and stuff so if you want to fix this just go and download the latest release of apk tool so it's not the dirty version so I'm going to w get that and then we're just going to run the same command but we're going to use java-jar pass in this apk tool and then we're going to build apcrypt and the output is going to be modified.apk that should run through without errors we've now got this modified.apk and now we just want to go and try and run it and see what happens we could also open this up in Jadix GUI to compare it there but there's not really any need let me open up Android Studio which is a uh, a program used for debugging APKs and stuff like that and in here we're going to go into more actions profile or debug APK let's go and find this APK so you can install different versions of different mobile devices to this you can see here we've got pixel 5 API 28 at the top so you can install different versions of Android onto different devices and then test them out and it's something in which developers would use to make sure their apps don't have problems on different versions of Android and different tablets and mobiles and stuff. Alright, so once this is loaded we just hit play. It's going to open it up and try to play it. And you see we run into this error saying install pass failed no certificates and it tells us the APK we've used has a signature verification has, has failed and we can retry it or close it down. So I'm going to close this down this is something that we're going to need to do is just go and make sure we set create a signature for it. So to do that we can use key tool. See the options here. We're going to use key tool dash gen key dash v dash key store. I'm going to call this my release key dot key store dash alias modified apk dash key alg rsa dash key size 2048 bits dash validity just how long it's valid for a lot of this stuff probably doesn't matter I'm just taking this from my notes from a previous challenge that I did it's asking for a password we can't put in a blank password so I'm going to just use password same again just leave all these as default and that's that generated now we just need to sign the APK which we can do with jar signer so options up let's do jar signer dash verbose dash sig alg sha1 with rsa dash digest alg sha1 key store my release key enter in our password and now it's signed that apk so again those commands that i entered in there i don't have those memorized I just type those out from my notes but maybe some of those things don't need to be there so that's fine let's open this up in Android Studio again and see if it now plays okay so we need to import the new APK and then let's try and hit play it's gonna connect to the emulator it can take a little while to open but hopefully we don't get any errors this time launch succeeded and here we can see enter VIP code to get your ticket so what I'm going to do now is type admin, hit submit, and we got our VIP subscription. Okay, that's not actually right. We shouldn't have got the VIP subscription because I modified that with if not equals. So it's saying if it doesn't equal, maybe I got this hash wrong. No, it's admin. Okay, um, that wasn't what I was expecting, but we got our flag there. Let me try and put in something else let's do admin1 submit and we also get the flag okay I'm a little surprised about that uh, let me just show actually just to demonstrate that I'm gonna open up the original run apk crypts open this up let's try admin submit and we get wrong VIP code we enter anything else and we'll get the same thing. Uh, I'm not too sure what happened there. I was expecting that to take anything but what we entered here, but oh well, we got the flag. Not too sure what I did wrong there. 
But anyway, that has been the AP Crypt challenge, the first retired mobile challenge. There's a couple more, so I'll try and get through some more shortly. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.